Hello and welcome! In this video I want to show you how to build an easy adjustable FM transmitter, which you can adjust with this potentiometer. The original design was published by Mac Magazine. I have two prototypes and I made two changes. One the potentiometer to adjust the frequency easily and to a bandpass filter so we don't accidentally transmit in frequencies we don't want to transmit stuff on. For the circuit board I've cut out little pieces and glued them on a large piece of circuit board to create connection points and the large circuit board is ground. Before I will start soldering I will show the circuit diagram. These are two 0.01 microfarad capacitors, but I think they are easier to find as 10 nanofarad capacitors. I have to talk about the coil later. I will make this by myself because it's hard to find to buy an inductance uh, with this value. This is the part I've changed. This is a so-called Varicap, a variable capacitor diode. It's a BB405B and this here is a normal 1 nanofarad capacitor and between here and here is a 150 kilo ohm resistor and from plus to ground is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and this creates a voltage divider to supply a certain voltage here and by changing the voltage we can change the capacitance of this varicap and with the capacitance the frequency of the circuit. This here is the bandpass filter and it's just made of a 20 picofarad capacitor, two coils the same as here and a 6 picofarad capacitor and then the antenna. Important thing about the bandpass filter, at the first prototype I added the bandpass filter with a piece of coaxial cable afterwards and with the second prototype I tried to add this on the circuit board itself. However, it reduced the range significantly and it's probably better if it's a bit separated from the rest of the circuit because the coils probably influencing each other and reducing the range so it's better to keep the bandpass filter separated from the main circuit. I will now start soldering the 10 kilo ohm resistor from this pad to ground and the two 10 nanofarad capacitors from this pad to ground and from this pad to ground and the 27 kilo ohm resistor from this pad to this pad. Now the electrolytic capacitor that can be anything between 1 and 33 microfarads and it's connected with the positive side to the pad with the 10 kilo ohm resistor and with the negative side to the pad for the audio input. Now the transistor, it's a 2N3904 and it's connected with collector to this pad, emitter to this pad and base to this pad. Now a 470 ohm resistor between here and ground and a 10 picofarad capacitor between here and here. The 10 picofarad capacitor and the 470 ohm resistor is now in place and I will solder now the 1 nanofarad capacitor and the varicap. You can see that the varicap has a marking and it must be connected with the marking to this pad where the voltage is applied. Now I will connect the 150 kilo ohm resistor and the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. I don't have a 150 kilo ohm resistor, I will use a 270 kilo ohm and I think usually 
uh, a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer is used here but it seems to work fine with a 270 kilo ohm resistor and a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer here. You can see it's a very big resistor, it's just because I had this lying around. You can also use a smaller resistor and make the spacing between these two pads a bit smaller. To connect the potentiometer I soldered some wires on it and I will connect the middle pin to this pad with the resistor and one wire to plus, this will be here, and one wire to ground. And it actually doesn't matter if you use the left wire for plus or the right wire for plus. What matters is that you use the middle pin to connect to this pad with the resistor. For the coils I used 15 gauge copper wire, wrapped it four times around an M6 bolt and stretched it approximately 1.2 to 1.5 centimeters. In the last video someone asked about the thickness of the wire and I think the thickness is actually not that important. I tried it with thinner wire from old electronics and it worked fine. So the thickness is not that important as long as it's not too extreme. To be able to solder the coil on the circuit board I made little feet on each side. All what's left to do now is to solder the audio and power cable. The power cable gets connected with plus to this side of the coil on the side where the capacitor is and with minus to ground. Because the transmitter only transmits mono, I soldered a positive wire on one channel of a stereo plug and a negative wire on ground. The positive wire of the audio input gets connected to the negative side of the electrolytic capacitor and the negative side to ground. Now we can give it 9 to 12 volts and turn the potentiometer to adjust the frequency. It's a bit difficult to adjust and um, you have to readjust on the radio because if you get close to the transmitter it will change the frequency and if you adjust and then go away it will jump a bit and you have to readjust at your radio and now it's perfect. Now it's working and without an antenna it has a range of a few meters. If you add an antenna you have a range of 200 to 300 meters but then I would highly recommend adding a bandpass filter to not accidentally transmit on other frequencies. As I already said, it's probably better if the bandpass filter is a bit separated from the circuit board, otherwise it can reduce range and it's made of three connection points. One connection point as input, then a 20 picofarad capacitor here and a coil to ground from here to here, then another coil from this connection point to this one and then a 6 picofarad capacitor from here to ground and then it goes to the antenna. Right now I have only a normal antenna cable and that gets connected to this antenna. The bandpass filter gets connected with a piece of coaxial cable with the inner conductor to the emitter of the transistor and this connection point and the outer conductor on ground here and ground here. If you like this video give it a thumbs up or subscribe for more science projects. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below. Until next time.